Here's the other big story here in the States, vaccines. So let me start with this. Polio is one of the worst plagues or epidemics in the history of the world. This is like a horror movie. It arrived every summer. It struck without warning. Children would suddenly become paralyzed. Imagine your child one day can't get out of bed and no one knew how it spread. No one knew what caused it. There was no vaccine for decades. The only thing there was was this. Take a look at this picture. You see that? It's called an iron lung. Imagine seeing your child having to be inside that thing, inside that machine that breathed for him. It was the only way that your child could breathe. And then along came this guy. This guy's name is Jonas Salk. He's a scientist. And in 1955, some people say he saved the world. Saved millions of lives by coming up with a vaccine which he tested on himself and on his own family. Talk about a sacrifice. Did he, he, he essentially had the patent for the vaccine. And he chose not to patent it himself. He chose not to become a multimillionaire because he didn't patent it. He wanted to give it away. And when he was asked, why don't you patent it? He famously answered with these words, can I patent the sun? He said the sun belonged to the world and this patent belonged to the world. His moral conviction as a human being was that the discovery did not belong to him. It belonged to everyone, despite being the person who had come up with it. Now, I want to I want to make a comparison to today. Now, let's come back to today. The White House today, in fact, just about an hour ago, 45 minutes ago, announced that it's creating a team to lead the search for a COVID-19 vaccine. They say they're going to get it done by the end of the year. Who will lead it? A venture capitalist named Monsef Slaoui. He comes from the world of big pharma, and he's going to be working alongside a four-star general. Dichotomy? Difference? Joining us now, George Galloway, former member of the British Parliament. I, I wanted to create that comparison because I think it says something about the times we live in, George. I'm not sure. What does it say to you? Well, the more they talked of that task force, the faster I counted my spoons, to paraphrase Oscar Wilde. I grew up in the time of polio, Rick. I was one of those given his injection for free. And uh, then it became a sugar lump, actually. And it did save the world. It certainly saved the children of the world. Earlier, of course, smallpox uh, was uh, a scar across the face of the world, which was also eliminated by vaccine. And so vaccines work if they're properly supervised and properly constituted. But the worst possible scramble for a vaccine would be to make multi-billion pound profits for individual companies. And we're seeing some of that ugliness today. I don't know if you're across it. There's a, a war of words breaking out between France and the United States because the United mm -hmm. States has tried to purloin first dibs on a French vaccine that's in the making, as they had earlier done with a German company, provoking first the German, then the French governments uh, to warn these companies that uh, they had given those companies uh, huge tax breaks uh, while they were doing their research, and they would not allow uh, the dollar to be the king in this. Hmm. If it, it comes from China or Cuba or both working together, there's a pledge that the vaccine will be available at cost price. But if it comes from one of these big pharma companies, you can be sure it'll be far more than that. You know, it's interesting as I think of this, and I'm glad you mentioned that situation, that skerfuffle going on today between France and the United States arguing about who's going to own it and who's going to share it with whom. Um, look, I'm as much a capitalist as the next guy. I do believe that when someone works hard for money, they do create an incentive for themselves to do more. But at the same time, I worry that if we put everything on greed and profit, we lose something in the end. And we may not be able to eventually have scientists leading the charge. Instead, we have money people leading the charge. What's your take on that? 
Yes, and it also vastly increases the danger of bad vaccines, and they exist too. Uh, there are all kinds of stories about vaccines that not only didn't work, uh, but uh, actually did the opposite of working, made people far more sick, even killed people. And of course, if profit is the motive, the danger of that is, of course, multiplied. There are companies right now who have invested fortunes in a vaccine. And uh, if they had to cut corners, if they had to even tell an inexactitude or two in order to get those vaccines past the regulator into the arms of the people, some of them would be ready to do it. Um, I think the only trustworthy vaccine is one that is entirely vouched for uh, by the medical community, out of love, out of the Hippocratic mm -hmm. principle of do no harm. Uh, that's the only vaccine I would trust. And so uh, good luck to the general and the big pharma guy. I, I, I'm hoping myself that the vaccine will be discovered by people who are more like the man who gave us the polio vaccine. And my goodness, he must be a saint in heaven now if there's a God. The White House told us uh, some 45 minutes ago that they will have a vaccine and it will be done by the end of this year. Contrarily, every single health expert and epidemiologist says, at best, second quarter of next year. Who do you believe? Well, it'll be one of the most rapidly developed vaccines in all history if it is available this year. It's not, of course, impossible, and there's a lot of people in virtually every country working on this, all the best universities, and as I say, China and Cuba are probably ahead of the rest. Uh, but uh, will it be a safe vaccine by the end of the year? Because that's equally important in getting the vaccine, that it be the right vaccine, that it be a safe one. So I pray, and I pray nightly for this as the father of many small children, by the grace of God. Uh, I'm not going to give my children a vaccine until it's safe. Neither am I sending them back to school, by the way, uh, with reference to your earlier report. They'll not be going back to school until after the summer. Do you see a Jonas Salk in this environment, a guy who comes up with a cure and a vaccine and chooses not to patent it because he wants to share it with the world? I do, uh, but not in your country or mine, I'm afraid to say. <laughs> I think that the people uh, that are working in the Cuba-China partnership are the closest thing to Salk that we're going to get. It's a pity, uh, but when you live in a land, as we both do, uh, that knows the price of everything and the value of nothing, I'm afraid money will not just talk, but as Bob Dylan says, swear. The price of everything and the value of nothing. George Galloway, my thanks to you, sir. Much is being written and talked about today regarding the coronavirus numbers coming out of Russia. The peculiarity of Russia.